What if I told you that there is a FNAF character so mysterious as of yet that we know absolutely nothing about them? And when I say nothing, I mean even his name. This guy. So as I'm sure a lot of you know by now, Funko not too long ago released their new line of pop figures, action figures, plushies, and mystery minis all based on Five Nights at Freddy's Balloon Circus. The problem? Uh, we have no idea what Balloon Circus even is. It's true, throughout the entire series, the only character to be associated with balloons is Balloon Boy, who these balloon characters bear a striking resemblance to. As for Circus, we've got even less, unless you count the Funtime animatronics who have a very light clown motif throughout all their designs. But trust me, none of them have anything near as blatant as Circus Freddy or Circus Foxy. So then, what are these new figures promoting if it's not a pre-existing anything? Well, the current working theory is that they're for the new DLC for Security Breach. Ruin. I mean, we know literally nothing about these characters, but when they were first discovered, they did carry the Security Breach branding on them internally. This is really interesting, especially since pop figures are being made of them, since Funko never actually made any pop figures for Security Breach. Something was up. It became more confusing when this Security Breach identifier was changed to Balloon Circus and people suspected a new game was in the works, maybe some kind of spin-off. I think that's not going to be the case, but it does remain a possibility. But somehow, in a sea of characters we know nothing about, one remains the most mysterious out of all of them. This white version of Balloon Freddy. But before I talk any further about this guy, I need to give him a name shorter than this white version of Balloon Freddy. So I'm gonna call him Vanilla. Vanilla is a very odd character in this whole lineup. He only appears in the Mystery Minis group and is by far the rarest figure in that group, with a 1 out of 72 chance to snag him. Well, the rarest alongside a Golden Chica figure. Which brings me to my first point, Funko does like to do recolors of their mystery minis as their rarest grabs, but I don't think that's the case here. In this series, you can grab a glow-in-the-dark Balloon Bonnie and two golden variants of Circus Freddy and Balloon Chica respectively. Vanilla here seems to have at least a little more thought put into his design, with his colors seeming to be more intentionally different than these. Aside from that, Vanilla also appears on the side of the box, indicating that he's not meant to be some sort of gimmick figure and is in fact a member of the main cast, if you want to call it that. So let's discuss this design. Aside from his mold being the same as the one used for Balloon Freddy, Vanilla has a very unusual design for any Freddy we've seen thus far. He has white fur, blue eyes, pink cheeks, and a Balloon Boy-esque outfit with a yellow and pink shirt and pink shorts. He also carries a light blue balloon. Oh, and his propeller hat matches his shirt. I don't know if it's worth noting or not either, but Vanilla's is the only one of these figures whose outfit avoids the color red, which kind of makes him look off when grouped with the other four. There's also the fact that his eyes and balloon aren't just blue, they're this very bright blue when compared to Balloon Freddy. So then, what does this design mean? Well, in order to explain what I think it represents, I first need to catch you up on a particular theory. FunF recently has proposed a theory that I agree with 100%. Maybe one of the only theories that I agree with him so heavily on. That being, he believes that the Circus and Balloon figures are priming us for the Ruin DLC as a continuation of the Balloon World arcade cabinet you can find in Security Breach. For those who don't know, in Security Breach, there's a secret arcade cabinet you can find called Balloon World. It's a Flappy Bird clone where you play as Balloon Boy. You can play until you start to follow this purple path, where eventually Sun and Moon combine into Eclipse and the game ends. On its own, this arcade cabinet doesn't really provide us with anything but confirmation that Afton left his mark on basically every machine in the Pizzaplex. However, knowing that Gregory was at one point also possessed by Afton, it becomes more clear. In Security Breach, there's a different set of arcade cabinets called Princess Quest, and beating all three eliminates the Afton virus from Vanessa's mind, freeing her from his control. So what if Balloon World is the same thing, but for Gregory? Well, that would mean we need two more arcade cabinets. Maybe one themed around the Balloon Gang, and one themed around the Circus Gang. Maybe Gregory is still somehow being manipulated by Afton, and it's up to Ruin's protagonist to help him. And the way to do this is by beating all three of these cabinets. And if that's the case, it makes Vanilla's inclusion that much stranger. I'll be blunt, I don't know who Vanilla is for sure, but I have four suspects that I think are worth looking over. So let's start with Suspect 1. So when I first looked into Vanilla's design, the thing that struck me the most was the white fur. Not just because it's highly unusual for a variant of Freddy to have white fur, but because it's only been done once before. 
You hold the horrors They lurk beneath the shadows of remorse You wouldn't know of course when I fall Funtime Freddy is the variant of Freddy from Sister Location, and aside from having white fur, he also has pink cheeks, just like Vanilla. Hell, Vanilla is even holding a blue balloon, and Funtime Freddy is most commonly seen with a blue bunny on his hand. Socket. It might not be a perfect fit quite yet, but let me explain. Funtime Freddy as a character is one that's relatively easy to track. He was most likely used at birthday parties to collect kids and use them to create Remnant. When FF was scooped along with the other fun times to create Ennard, it seems that Freddy still had his personality. I say this because later on, when Baby is kicked out of the Ennard tribe, it's Funtime Freddy whose face resurfaces as the sort of leader of the remaining Endos in their body. It's also worth noting that in the blueprints for Molten Freddy, as he was then called, MF was stated to have the highest remnant concentration of any animatronic ever by that point. Essentially, this thing was brimming with the energy of lost souls, most likely because the fun times were being used heavily before the events of Sister Location. But eventually, when the FNAF 6 pizzeria collapsed, Molten Freddy was no more. Supposedly. Although fire is supposed to be Remnant's weakness, it doesn't always work. Take it from Afton over here. The FNAF character encyclopedia then spells it out for us. The blob that we see in Security Breach likely has its origins in Ennard, meaning that it's most likely what became of Molten Freddy after the events of FNAF 6. Hell, this would even explain why the primary face it uses as the main head of its body is a repaired version of Funtime Freddy's face. I believe that Funtime Freddy, in this multi-game journey, has become the ultimate form of remnant in human suffering, and I believe he may have a role in freeing Gregory. Or trapping his soul, Jerry is still out on what exactly the Blob's motivations would be. But I do believe it's possible that Vanilla here might be what the Blob looks like after breaching into the game Gregory's soul must be guided through. Whether this is a villainous role or not, I can't really tell, but it would explain why he looks like Balloon Freddy with some different colors. The game wouldn't have Vanilla as an actual character, so the Blob uses his sprite and messes with the colors to approximate a form of itself that can interact with the player. But there are some problems with this theory. Namely, it doesn't all add up. Although the Blob does have its origins in Ennard, it doesn't really seem like Ennard would have the motivation to attack Afton like we see the Blob do in the Afton ending. Sure, it was Baby who wanted to be all nice and kind to her father, but I'm not really sure if the fun times would instinctually try to kill their creator like that. So there's a chance the Blob isn't actually Molten Freddy. And also, the design itself, aside from the white fur and pink cheeks, does not line up with Funtime Freddy at all. Funtime Freddy, for example, has a pink muzzle and Vanilla has a white one. Funtime Freddy's outfit also has black and pink accents, not yellow and pink like we see on Vanilla. As a matter of fact, unless you count Chica's gross torso here, the Blob doesn't have any yellow on it either. So while the Blob theory is possible, I do think it should stay on the back burner for now. The second suspect is the one who has had a reputation of being a reskin. Golden Freddy, or more so, Cassidy. In FNAF 1, there was a rare easter egg where Golden Freddy could spawn in your office after you checked the West Hall corner, resulting in a jump scare unless you lifted your monitor up. Golden Freddy in FNAF 2 was much the same, except lifting your monitor up this time would be what killed you. You instead needed to put on your Freddy mask before he fully disappeared. Since then, he's been a recurring character, but arguably his biggest role in any actual storytelling sense was in Ultimate Custom Night where he's revealed to be the one you should not have killed. What does this mean? It means William Afton fucked up by killing this one kid, because this one knows how to hold a grudge, and also keep him bound to his own personal hell, facing up against 50 of his own nightmares, including Trash in the Gang and a former employee. But since then, where Golden Freddy has been has remained a mystery. After being left completely out of Help Wanted, implying that Fast for Entertainment doesn't want people to know about him, fans were left scratching their heads as to where he could have gone. But then we kind of had an answer. In scrubbing Security Reach's files for answers regarding the Princess Quest arcade cabinets I mentioned earlier, it was found that the princess's name was Cassidy, which was the name of the vengeful spirit. Although this was eventually changed, it brought attention to the possibility, and even likelihood, that Golden Freddy's spirit was manipulating the arcade cabinets. Could it be possible then that Vanilla is Cassidy, and he'll ultimately be helping Gregory like the princess helped Vanessa? Well, it's a good thought, and definitely not my least favorite theory, but it has one pretty big damn issue with it. That being design, once again. Namely, this bear's not yellow. Although Vanilla is wearing purple and yellow, which are Fredbear's colors, 
the fact that the fur itself is not these colors is what ultimately has me doubting this theory. Is it possible? Yes, but we can't really call this character Golden Freddy, now can we? Maybe Cassidy's dropped the Golden Freddy persona as a spirit, but that's something I honestly doubt even more, because Scott and Steel Wolf know that Golden Freddy as a character is important to the series in terms of recognizability. If you asked a random person on the street who has ever played FNAF or watched Let's Plays of it, there's a decent chance that they'll know who Golden Freddy is. As it stands, Vanilla just isn't going to be that replacement, especially as a DLC exclusive character. This leads us to Suspect 3, and to be honest, the character I doubt the most. This reality, reality, my mentality, reality, everything changes so rapidly, and I'm ready for the never ending fight. It's the Bunny Man. So there are quite a few reasons I doubt Vanilla is a form of William Afton, but I have to give this theory the benefit of the doubt because if I don't, I'll regret it when I read the comments to this video. By the way, I do read every comment I get. It's usually really cool when someone tells me they like that I sometimes use Hollow Knight music in the background. By the way, since I have a new computer at long last, let me know if you guys want to see any streaming out of me. I'd love to stream some Hollow Knight, Pop Goes Arcade, FNAF fan games, whatever. But back to White Bears and Yellow Rabbits. So, believe it or not, Vanilla not being a bunny does not immediately disqualify this character from being William Afton. Apparently, in some upcoming Fazbear Fright stories, we'll be seeing a white tiger animatronics who behaves very similarly to a certain rabbit man, and may in fact be possessed by him. So it's possible that there's a similar situation here. He's wearing his ears on the inside. Hell, his outfit actually does lend credit to this theory, since yellow and purple, or pink, I've been using them interchangeably, aren't just Fredbear's colors, they're glitch traps. Although I can't really explain the blue eyes or blue balloon, I do think that specific detail actually does line up kind of nicely. Perhaps Vanilla is a version of Afton who inserted himself into the game in order to prevent Gregory from escaping, similar to the Shadow Freddies at the beginning of Pizza Sim who tried to block you from throwing pizza at the kids. But other than that, I'm afraid that's where the connections end. First of all, although Afton is definitely inside the arcade cabinets, he's not really hiding it. In Princess Quest, all your enemies are rabbit-based in some way, so for him being a bear at all is very strange. Unless he has some reason to be hiding his true identity, I don't think he'd actually be disguising himself as Vanilla. On top of that, uh... I'm not sure exactly how Afton would be doing after Security Breach's endings. I know that he always comes back and all that, but this seems like the furthest stretch so far. But our last suspect is actually the one I'm the most hopeful for. I'll peel the band-aid off the face right now, I think it might actually be Gregory. Now, think about it. If this is Gregory's soul, as I suspect it might be, then it's possible that this is actually the playable character of these Balloon Circus games. I think that's reason enough for him to stick out among the crowd. Or maybe it's Gregory stuck as some kind of NPC, yet another reason to stick out. But the reason I think he might be Gregory is in theming. Compared to Princess Quest, which was also about freeing his soul. The main character of that game was this incredibly bright figure who practically glowed. Now look at Vanilla. Vanilla is a bright set of colors that do the same thing. They're both light in the darkness, or rather, light in the eclipse. Vanilla being so brightly colored to me portrays goodness and innocence, such as that of a child like Gregory. Although I don't have much evidence to back this theory up, I do think narratively speaking, this would be my favorite theory thus far. That said, between all of the theories I've laid out, I honestly might have to go with the Blob being our best contender. His design matches the most out of all our suspects, and he's a character with a relatively open-ended story, and motivations that could make him play both sides, or neither, at the drop of a hat. And with random Security Breach ruin teasers being thrown up left and right, it leads me to wonder just what else is in store for our small white bear friend here. I'm Demuted. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, it helps me out more than you think. It's completely free, and you can opt out of it whenever you want. Peace.